Good day, Delini, and I hope you are doing very well. So thank you for coming into our second uh, Albanian Youth Conference for Future Spoonbill Nest. And uh, we are proud and very happy and would like to thank you for your participation and also, also uh, the project Swiss Contact that uh, helped us for, um, to be in contact with you. And as, as far as I, we discussed and we had the conversation together, uh, you know very well Albania because you have worked in Albania for two years. Huh? Can you have a, sh a short opinion about youth in Albania and about your experience first before we start and do the, the next of, um, uh, of our, I mean, of our interviews and our discussion? Please. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, Elwis. Uh, thanks a lot for having invited me at this conference. It's a pleasure for me to still be in contact with uh, Albania because uh, I have to say, uh, living in Albania for me was one of um, the best experiences I had in my life because um, I thought um, I will go for my work in maybe Afri Africa, but I never thought I will go to, to Albania. And I, I have to say, to be honest, uh, I didn't know nothing about Albania before coming and I was a very positive surprise. Uh, and the best surprise was the people, how people are nice and well, welcome. They welcome you really as a member of a family. And uh, yeah. yeah, I miss this kind of uh, hospitality, Albanian hospitality. This oh. is really, yeah. This is, this is perfect. So, uh, I mean, uh, our theme is very interesting, I think. Uh, so, uh, and I want to, to ask you some things about, uh, okay, we want to be like Switzerland. Uh, and I think that we have discussed and we agreed that the way to do that, it's all based on the education. So the fundament of education in Switzerland, as far as I have, have, have the information and read also have the comments and have, have had chance to meet people that uh, friends and colleagues from, from uh, Switzerland is that your system is very good in the sense of um, bringing the youth very early into a career path yes. so and that's why we are here because we want to become like switzerland but we want we want to find the secret how to become like switzerland <laughs> and I think it's not that difficult if we do and set up the way you work with education and uh, simply you let's say in a way you have uh, uh, already experimented or not experiment, but you have implemented that. So uh, on your process, you have had uh, some some difficulties, but now it's much easier because if we implement in Albania, at least we will do it shorter because we can learn from your mistakes. So therefore, that's why I'm here because my question is simple: How do you become like Switzerland? And uh, I want to bring to our citizens also to make it simple to, to all of us is that uh, let's suppose that we have a little Heidi from Switzerland. She was born in Switzerland and now she wants to kindergarten. So yes. the floor is yours and we need her uh, career up to the moment she will uh, uh, get employed and she will have a clear future in a uh, clear uh, uh, youth, a uh, clear uh, career future in her country. So floor is yours and I will come with some questions on the way after you will uh, explain some things. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So let me share with you uh, how educational system, how it works in Switzerland. Here, do you see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, uh, can you please share again because we lost it again? And just share. I have you have the right to share the screen. I okay here. Yeah. Now can you can you see it? Yes, we see it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so thank you for your uh, introduction and uh, your question on how to become uh, like a Swiss. Um, it's very, so in Switzerland, we have a very complex, as you can see, uh, educational system. And I think the more important is uh, that you understand uh, our VET system because it's what it makes us famous. But 
let's start with Heidi, who she is three years old. And uh, you correct, she said, Heidi, when she is three years old, she, um, she goes to the kindergarten. Um, this is what we call uh, primary education. And uh, kindergarten is not compulsory in all of uh, Switzerland. We have a different way of how a French-speaking part of Switzerland is working and German-speaking part uh, is working. So this is, but I will go this way. So Heidi, uh, she goes to the kindergarten. She is uh, either three or four. She can start with three years old and uh, even with four years old. And in kindergarten, it's two years. And uh, the children already in kindergarten are taught about basic uh, manner and knowledge, meaning that when they are introduced already to uh, the Swiss culture. Yes. And um, they, um, in kindergarten, the aim is to teach ch children social skills and basic manner through play-based um, play learning. They start learn learning music, games, arts, and crafts. So it's more, much more on the on the soft skills. I mean, level, huh? Just yes. together and to 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 start and move. I mean, that make them sure that they they can cooperate with with the friends in in the courses in the. Exactly, it's uh, a lot of uh, play with other students, with other uh, youngs, and they play together, they sing together, they create yeah, together. Something. Is the kindergarten public or private? How is it in Switzerland? Uh, it's it's both. Uh, it's uh, public, but you have some private uh, kindergarten. But the ma majority of the kids they go to the public kindergarten. To the public, and uh, of course, uh, it's with an extra payment that the parents pay. And how long this takes the kindergarten? What time they start? Do they have some some uh, food there, or they have lunch there? And what is the time that they start the kindergarten? <laughs> Uh, it depends, also it's um, because they are very uh, small, they are three or four years old, and it's uh, either one morning or the afternoon. They go either, let's say, Monday morning and uh, Tuesday afternoon. I see. So, and the food, no, they have to go to, to eat um, in their family, they come oh. back at home. Okay. Because in Switzerland, we have a lot of kindergarten. I mean, you live very near to your kindergarten. You don't need to, to make a lot of uh, way to go there. It's like 10 minutes, 20 minutes by foot. So, so I you can go home. It's like a, this is like a urbanization plan. And so when you do a city planning, always there is a, uh, there is a, a kindergarten nearby the, the community you live. I exactly. I understand. And what is the, the education of the, of the, of, uh, the teachers or the, the teachers that are trained or educators that are working in the kindergarten? Uh, it's a very high uh, level uh, of education of the teacher. Here, as you see, you have all the paths, but here you have University of Teacher Education. And even for teachers uh, who uh, teach in the kindergarten, they have to uh, go here to the ter tertiary education of higher uh, of, um, teacher education. Meaning right. they have uh, to do the baccalaureate three years plus three years of University of Teacher Education. So it's a long way. I see. I see. Okay, let's start with Heidi. Heidi, then now it's clear so we can go to the next step. So to understand, so primary means that uh, in kindergarten, it's, uh, Heidi is three years old and she can go up to five years old. Uh, on yeah, uh, yes, uh, Heidi, um, she can go to the kindergarten uh, first when she is at least three years old. Before, it's not possible. Yes. But she can start even with four years old. So the parents they can choose either they send their children uh, even with three years old or with four years old. And it's two years. Yeah. And after she can be five or six, and she goes to the primary education. And um, as I told you here, don't, don't look at this because it's a French speaking part in something different. But um, here in primary education, um, it's, uh, it's six years of school. So meaning ID, she is uh, between uh, five or six years, and she has after the kindergarten six years of primary level education. Six years of primary education. Yes. Here you see, you hear it's a number of year. One, two years here, it's okay, kindergarten. Oh, three. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's um, primary education. I see. Including the kindergarten. Yes. 
Okay. And it's a French speaking part is four years, but this isn't right. something. So, okay. I see. And um, in primary education, the focus is really uh, that the kids, they learn uh, first their mother language, how to write, how to read. And uh, what is very important in Switzerland, because as you know, we have uh, four uh, official languages, and it's that we already start to learn a second languages, second national languages. So meaning for the student of the German speaking part, they start to learn French. And for the students of the French speaking part, they start to learn uh, German. I see. Uh, by my, uh, I have a good, a good friend. She lives. She lives in Geneva, and I learned from her a very. I mean, she has an experience with her kids, and she told me that uh, it's it's quite interesting to be honest. And uh, she told me, and her husband also, and she told me that it's um, her. She and herself. She is Albanian. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the kids, they always she always spoke Albanian in the kindergarten because it's Geneva. Uh, they mm -hmm. speak French, so the kids in kindergarten always speak French. Yes. Her husband is from Italy, and the kids with the with the, the with her husband uh, sp spoke Italian. Mm -hmm. and her maid in home. The lady who takes care of them was Spanish, so they were speaking with her in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Then in school they learned English and I don't know French or I don't know what something like that. So the idea is that nowadays their kids are speaking four or five languages and they've, they've never mixed that. Mm -hmm. I found this very interesting, and this is happening in Switzerland. That's why I want to, to I mean, to to understand. I mean, it's very easy if your kids, if the kids get used on, on that. So and. Yeah. yeah, and then I want to share this experience because it's happening like that. Yeah, and Geneva, it's, it's a city uh, which in Switzerland is very uh, particular because it's international city. Yes. And we have a lot of expats who live there. And uh, I am not surprised about what you are telling me. Um, and it's very, uh, yeah, your example is very, uh, is very interesting because um, it's not the case in uh, everywhere. But what you say is really uh, the kid in Switzerland, we, we are um, sensibilized to learn at least two other languages, yeah. our mother tongue and the two other nationals, so the German and the Italian or the French and the Italian. Yeah. So, yeah, this was, so two languages they learned in, in school, three languages they learned because of the, so, the family background, and then, yeah, so this is it. They, yeah, they learn two languages at least at the primary level. I mean, her yeah. mother language and depend if they are in the French speaking part, they learn German, and if they are in the German speaking yeah. part, they learn French. Yeah. But after, when they go to the up lower secondary level, they learn English. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so continue. Sorry to interrupt, but no problem. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit uh... Okay, uh, so should I continue to the primary level or should? Okay, so to the primary level, um, what is very important is uh, they start, um, they make the emphasis um, in the math. Um, geography, history, and uh, all the civic education. Um, social, is, social science. In social sciences, etc. This is where they start to learn uh, this kind of uh, sciences or subject. Yeah. And after six years of primary uh, education, they go to the lower uh, secondary level. And here it's a very, very important um, uh, level here in Switzerland because uh, this is uh, where the children during three years they have career orientation for their future um, because it's uh, three years and um, during these three years um, they um, because at the end of the primary level uh, the, the children they are tests and based on the result of the test they are in different um, classes yeah. um, and in these different classes either they are much more in the way to go to the baccalaureate school other they have more they are more technical and they go to the vet school so, it's, here, so they divide let's say this is without the kindergarten this is in the, in the sixth grade yes so in the sixth grade they are divided they go into a career path yes so that means 
that here you, you allow the students, uh, or at least you identify after the test, you identify what are their skills. Are they able to go into the, into the social side, on the science side, scientific side, or on the professional side, eh? to make exactly. it more understandable, I understand. So here they start to think what they will become when they grow. grow. Exactly. So the first year is really the idea of the three years or of the three years of the um, lower secondary level. It's to to guide the student to to decide for their future. I see. During this three year, uh, the main um, intention for the teacher for the school is really that after the end of these three years, they know they have chosen the right profession for for them or what's the best for them. And to do this, uh, of course, uh, they are still have uh, mathematics, uh, sciences, and all the subjects. But uh, here you have uh, for all the students, even if they are in the, the so let's say the, the university way, the baccalaureate school way, or more in the uh, vet way, uh, they have to, um, to do each year uh, one uh, trainees uh, during one week in the businesses. To well, have a first um, confrontation with the first, first contact with the business world. Yes, and this is mandatory. So they have to do it during the first year, the second year, and the third year. During one week, and they have to write report and to they have to find uh, from their own the businesses to make the tra their apprenticeships or the trainees during the, this one week. Yeah. Of course, they have a lot of support, but uh, this is something mandatory. Yeah, Delini, this is quite interesting because. That we have a big challenge in Albania at the time being for the vocational education and training because this, the parents and students, even the schools, decide and start to do their, their homework just three months before they register for if they will go on a vocational education training school or in a, on a high school which is gymnasium. Or, mm -hmm. So that's a big gap we have. So the way you are uh, I mean, the way that Switzerland have tackled this is that they, 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 they do this career path orientations since earlier. So they, the students are not, they know, at least they get their own uh, mindset uh, prepared, what they will become when they are almost, uh, let's say, so it's like uh, they are on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the sixth grade, so when they are 12 years old, they exactly. Don't know what will be their future? What they will? What they? Where? What? Where, where are they good at? Yes, exactly. And this is a very great uh, concept. And always, even with the projects we we discuss in Albania, because we need to make a parallel with Albania. So that's the the I mean the intention of this our discussion. Mm -hmm. so the, the our gap in Albania is that we, when we integrate vocational vocational training, we do. The system, the Swiss, we want to copy the Swiss model, but not entirely. We want to copy that only on the vocational education training on the upper level. Huh? So the idea, the same mistake we did the bachelor, we did with the, with the Bologna, because Switzerland is not part of Bologna process. Are you there? Uh, no, we have some things yeah. different. So yeah. The same thing is in, with Bologna. So Bologna process in Albania for the, for the higher university, for the university and higher education, hasn't been implemented correctly from the ground. So Bologna should have been implemented from the, from the uh, let's say, lower, uh, from the upper secondary end school or even lower in that, in that position. So that's why we feel gaps on the, on, the, on, the, on the high school level or vocational education training. So this is very, very nice that you explained and I'm very happy to see that you I mean, this is uh, clear now how you tackle this kind of uh, activities. Uh, so you can continue now and open mm -hmm. it to the public also. Yeah, so they have these three years and uh, at the end of these three years, uh, maybe I can show you, they have as well um, mm -hmm. the possibility as well online to see um, uh, what do they need if they want to become a cook or if they want to, to work in a uh, Factory or factory, or I can show you. It's on online, but it's not in in English because uh, we all. But here I, I take the cook example, and so let's see. I am um, 
12 years old and I don't know what I want to do, but I know I am not so good uh, in mathematics, but I am good in French, for example. And here he can go to, to this site, he find cuisinier, so cook. Mm -hmm. And he say, oh, cuisinier, um, I have to be good in, in mathematics because uh, it's very strong here. And here, for example, uh, for French, uh, you see uh, here this is the French, so mother language, he has to be very good. And maybe he can see, okay, I am not so good in French, I am not so good in mathematics. Maybe it's not the best thing for me to become a cook. Uh, so he can go and uh, make some tests. Or uh, even here, you have the possibility to find, to, to fill in a, a test. And depend on the question and on the answer, he, he became a result. Okay, um, based on what you answer, uh, you you have the good profile to become a cook. So this is uh, he started with with this kind of uh, information even with twelve years old. I see. And how how long this this system has been in place now? Um. Yeah, that was um, a long time back. The vocational educational system in Switzerland uh, is uh, since uh, more than 90, the year of uh, 1930, we have the first uh, VET law. Yeah. So it's very, <laughs> very long time, yeah. yeah. I understand. What is the role of the business in this, in this uh, lower secondary level? Because this is inter interesting also. Yes, it's, very, uh, it's a very good question because the role of businesses, um, they are many. But here in this part is uh, to accept, to, to uh, welcome students during one week and to show them uh, how the business works. It is uh, the uh, first role. And a very, very important role is to, uh, to accept, to, to, um, to find people that to, to train them and to, to make um, uh, a contract, uh, uh, apprenticeships contract. And to, they, it's really important because we, we have um, a lot of businesses, as all businesses in Switzerland, they agree to, uh, to take uh, students uh, for an apprenticeship. Okay. And uh, before, um, the student, if they want to go to the vet school and they have, uh, the condition to go to a vet school is to have a work contract with the businesses. So without the businesses, the student, he cannot go to the vet school. So it's very important for us that the businesses uh, play as a, with us, so to say, so that they agree, they accept to take a, um, a young during three years or four years to uh, apprenticeship. So it's very important. Without the businesses, our vet system doesn't exist. I see. This is quite interesting. And, and the, uh, so we have now we, we came to a moment where the business is playing a major role what yes. is what is the the, the le, what is the the uh, let's say the level uh, the, the the role of the uh, local of uh, labor office in this in this or chamber of commerce what is the their role in this in this moment are they important chamber of commerce and, and, and also the the local uh, labor office uh, yes, they are very important um, because um, all uh, of our system, they are based, as they are collaborating together, as we are collaborating with the state, but with the labor commerce, with the work organization and with the school. And if one partner is not part in the, the game, our system doesn't work. So they have, we all have a role. So it's all written in, in our law, what uh, different... Um, so is a role yes it's regulated by law so law infrastructure fits to the to the scheme that's very yes. important. the last but not least in this segment is that what is the i mean because it's very sensitive in our in our country what is the uh, i mean does the business get a, any payment for this service i don't i mean my assumptions are not but just want to make sure that uh, just want to know uh, they don't get any any no. It's, a, it's, it's their social responsibility to be part of this, be, be part of this uh, development. Huh? Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, because in Albania also the business should, should know that they are very much responsible, their social responsibility mm -hmm. is to be uh, not and to see only the, the profitable aspect, but in order to, to benefit in the long run, they should be, make sure that they are already 
cooperating with public institutions and also schools and society in order to make sure that their business will have enough uh, human resources and qualified in the in the coming years. Yeah, thank you very much. Exactly. Yeah, so the benefits of the, the businesses, it's at the end, uh, after two years, at the end of the apprenticeship of the apprentice, he starts becoming, so he becomes an income, but a lower income, but he's a professional. So he, he produces a lot with a lower income, but only at the end of his apprentice, after three years. This That's is the benefit they can have, the yeah. business. This is perfect. This is really perfect. Okay, let's go and explain a little bit the vocational education and training and also this upper uh, secondary school because this is important to us yes yes so here uh, you see it's become a bit complicated and maybe i have to explain all of these uh, kind of links it's because our uh, system as well, uh, we are well known because um, we have per permeability meaning if you can not go directly to bac baccalaureate school it's not that you will never go there so meaning you go uh, after the secondary level, you go to the vocational education and, and training, so the apprenticeship. Uh, to go there, to enter your there, uh, as I said before, you need to have a work contract and after you are assigned to the school. And why is it like this? Because uh, during the week, so five days from Monday to Friday, the apprentice, they go four day working at the businesses and only one day at school. I see. And he is, and he is only... Uh, 14 years old here. No, he is at least 15 or 16 years old. Okay, here, okay, because this is the here. bridge year. How long it takes this bridge year? So this is, uh, as we see, uh, this is not a uh, compulsory year. This is only, this is an option for the students uh, who they are, they are not good enough um, at school to go directly to the uh, vet school or it's not maybe they are not good enough but it's maybe they didn't find a businesses I want to hire them for a vet uh, for an apprenticeship so not to leave him behind and that he is um, he left school without nothing he has the option to go to this bright year schools and this is one year and during this year either he continues to study uh, the subject teaching at school or he is making um, uh, internship in businesses in the way to find a contract to go to the vet school i see this is really uh, something that switzerland created this is quite new uh, maybe 10 years old or even less this has been like a bridge year in order to integrate everyone every exactly it's to yeah. the idea behind is uh, leave no one behind yeah i see that's perfect yeah Good idea yeah and uh, it's very also it's very interesting and it, it has really shown a lot of uh, results meaning um we don't have so many uh, dropout uh, students in our uh, school system I think dropout in all Switzerland is less than 2%. I see. Wow. 2%. Unbelievable. Not sure, but I think it's, uh, it's, around, it's very low. Okay. And yeah, you continue then? So you, you have the apprenticeships and the apprenticeships, it's either as a minimum three years mm -hmm. or uh, four years. And um, after the apprenticeships, depending from the uh, from the segment that you, I mean, from the industry. Profession. Yeah. Profession. Uh, yeah. For example, if you want to become a cook, it's uh, three years, or if you want to become an informatiker, it's four years. I see. And in here, what they do two first years? They do t theory, or they do always four years theory and practice. How they do it's more practice because they are working four day at the businesses and theory it's only one day at school so um maybe let me explain you uh, what the idea um the curricula is based on work situ situation meaning uh, the businesses um the, the businesses and the schools they have the same curricula for uh, all the professions so um maybe if i want to become a cook uh, you have one work situation is uh, okay i know how to cook a steak and what he do in the businesses, it's he learn in the practice how to cook a steak. And at the school, he learns the theory behind. It's I all related. Yeah. But it's really, as well at the school, they learn um, the theory behind the practice. They practice during the fourth day at the businesses. I see. And uh, 
what is very important maybe to mention is sometimes we think, okay, the, the apprentices, uh, they do what the business is only, they bring coffee to the, to the boss or to the chef. But no, it's not true. Really, uh, the apprentices, uh, they do um, exactly the same job as all the, they are integrated in all of the work situation, in all what is possible, in all uh, tasks, the businesses they have. And they, uh, uh, they, the businesses they have uh, control from the state to see, to check if uh, the businesses uh, really include the apprentices in the businesses. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a responsibility of the business to do so. Yes. It's regulated also by law, I understand. Yes. So the last but not least in this segment, uh, does the student get any payment from the government or from the business here? From the businesses. Okay, so business, so the idea is that with this model, a person in Switzerland, a young person, he is not only, uh, he is not only uh, uh, let's say, uh, being independent financially from the family, so he is uh, accountable, start to become accountable, he start to become um, himself financing his life, which is very important, but also he is not anymore uh, 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 a cost for the family, families in general, but also for the government. Is that correct? So this is the concept of this. So that's uh, no, not really. Uh, it's because he is self, in a way, he's self helping him family then, or he's not hundred percent, but he's on the way to that direction. Is that he's on the way, and he because what he earns is a very little. He can not live independently, no. but he can, yeah. But no, he is self. I mean, self financing himself, or supporting the family. Huh? So mm -hmm. it's not a big cost for the government, and not a big cost for the family either. Huh? And himself, he can subvent and do some 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 things with his. Uh, he's a good. He start to enter into the market with exactly. his feet. Yes, huh? he's starting. Yes, he's a consumer. Huh? In yes. 16, he's a consumer. Yeah. Yes. And maybe what is important to mention in that, uh, related to that is at school, uh, they learn as well how to calculate, to save money, to depend and to make some, yes. So he get how to manage, uh, uh, he get to manage his finance. Eh? Exactly. Which is very, very important. Which is exactly. Very important, yes. Yeah. Okay. Go to the next stage. So right now it's, uh, it's already, you have chosen her career path, she wants to become a cook, so she's getting some, um, some salaries, she likes her job, and then she wants to go further on. Mm -hmm. So if she wants to go further on, she has the possibility. Uh, okay, maybe uh, during the, the vet school, uh, she has the possibility to make, uh, integrate it to the apprenticeship, a baccalaureate, okay. uh, matura. I and uh, if she do so, if she or, or if she or he uh, make during the apprenticeship a matura, he can go to a uh, university of applied sciences, and it is in a tertiary level, at the same level as the university. I see. So here you see you have a federal vocational plus uh, matura. Yeah. You can go uh, in many. You have many options. You can go here to the university, you can go here for preparation for federal diploma. So uh, without interrupting the work, yeah? that's the concept. Yes. Okay. Okay. I see. So this is the career that Hyde has chosen to go on a professional way. Can she become a doctor? No. no. And if she wants to become a doctor, where are we, how is her career path? Then? So if you want to become a doctor here, we go back uh, to lower secondary level mm -hmm. and she go uh, to the baccalaureate school, Matura school. I see. And here it is three years or here you have maybe one year more. It, it is a French part in Geneva, it's four years. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the time in Switzerland it's three years. And after she have to uh, go to the university. I see. Uh, here. And after she has to make a bachelor, a master, and a PhD. So oh. three year bachelor plus two years uh, master, so five years and after the PhD. And oh. then you're, you have a doctorate. I see. That's perfect. So we have gave to, to Heidi 
two options. One is to go on a vocational way, I mean, on, on the professional or technical. And then and another one will, uh, it's to go through the scientific. Eh? So that's the concept we, so her career future is brilliant, I think. Yes. So this is the system of uh, vocational education. This is the system of education in Switzerland, and that's why you are so successful. Because you allow the youth to start and think of their future at the early stage, 12 years old. So, yeah, this is great, great concept. And I think and uh, yeah. this is what we are need to settle in our country. So, yeah. Yes, and we need to keep it simple, so not to go further <laughs> on. But Lini, uh, we would like to thank you for your presentation. I think this is enough uh, with the time we have. This is enough to to give the, uh, just to give an idea. But one more, the last question I have to you is that: Is there in if if this student finished these three years of uh, of uh, vocational education training, apprenticeship, uh, is this, can he go directly to uh, university? Technical more, he can stay one or two years and do his own things, travel the world or do these things. Yes, you can, also it's lifelong learning, so he can go and work 10 years even, and after go to a university. And sometimes it's even better because sometimes you have learned more practice, yeah. uh, more general knowledge, and you go uh, with, you are more mature and you go to the university. Yeah. And you have both practical and uh, general. Because in Albania, uh, as far we have done, we have conducted many several uh, uh, questionnaires, and also the, the parents' concept here is that right away after the high school or the, or, or the, the, the gymnasium, uh, they should go at the at university. But I think this is not the right concept in many cases, eh? because mm -hmm. the students they want to explore, they want to see where are good at. So when, as you said, it's a lifelong learning process. That means that if they explore on their own, that will be much much probable that their, their results in the in the university will be much higher because they knew already what they want. Exactly. This is the and, yeah. and can give you my uh, personal example. Yeah. Uh, because I went to to do the matura, and I said I don't want to go directly to the university, so I went to to work in the business. Uh, to see um, how to earn some money and to have some practical experiences. And after I went to the university and I make a bachelor, three years. And I didn't go uh, directly to the master because I wanted to have more work experiences. So I work four years and after four years, I go back to the master. And now I, am, I really know what I want. So this has helped me a lot. You are matured, you have the experience and you know what is the best for the for the for the market and for the for labor market and you want what you want and you know as well what you don't want and it's really important yeah, as well that's very true so you are in a way you are focused and yes focused. and you have your, your own intention and you know what what is good at you exactly. and you can do the best yeah so uh, yeah so what is the important thing uh, um, in your shortly just want to ask you for the uh, which are the most important aspects in education? Soft skills, are they important for the future? Uh, of course, they are very important. Soft skills are very important because uh, soft skills, you, you have it all your way. It's not only at school, but it's even in your social life, uh, in uh, your work life, and uh, when you are working uh, everywhere, you need soft skills in your everyday life. So it's very, very important. So thank you very much, Delini. I'm sure that uh, when we will start as, a, as an organization to to implement this, we'll, you will be on our with us to work together, and, and also maybe with Swiss contact <laughs> something like this together, and to implement in one city, maybe in Elbasan. We don't know that, but I want from you kindly want to ask you uh, three messages: one for parents, one for teachers, and one for kids, and one for Swiss contact also. If you can do that, would be great. <laughs> So, all message is short, you know. Okay, or uh, maybe for the parents, it's very important to support them to, to even if they want or okay, if they think, okay, uh, you you go, you need to go to to high school, but the kid wants to make a, a profession which is more technical. Uh, he has to support them. It's very important for the kid to have the support of their parents, yeah. and yeah, for the teacher as well, it's very. Um, 
it's very important to guide them to have the career orientation, to show them the, the perspective they can have in all the, the markets, I think. And um, so you say, uh, and for the kid, for the kid, yes, of course, for the kid. Uh, maybe what I can say for the kid, it's, um, it's you can choose, it's very difficult to, to choose even when you, you have only 12, 12 years old to know what you want to do in the future. And maybe it's important to inform them that it, you don't choose now a profession for your own life, your whole life. You can, it's, you can uh, see what you, you like, have a first profession or have a first uh, diploma. And after you can see, okay, this was good for me, this wasn't good for me. And uh, uh, I need to, so to, to explore the possibilities they have to them and not to only focus in one direction. And for Swiss contact, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, having working uh, for Swiss Contact also, and uh, with Swiss Contact Albania, I have to say that the project Skills for Job is a very, very good project with good results. Also, the, all the teams are very implied, and I, I, I remember I saw the apprenticeship. Uh, they were so happy to, to bring me some meal when they were in the businesses as a cook and uh, all this smile and I mean what they do it's very great and they need to continue and it's very important they focus on the uh, the relationship between the businesses and the school it's a strong focus it's very important thank you Delini, for the, for your time and of course of course we as an organization we would like to to thank you the government of Switzerland and also the ambassador of Switzerland in Albania Swiss contact all their team they have a great team and they have the contribution will be uh, very valuable for our future development in our country. It's a member, memorable and will be not forgotten. Forgotten. So that's that's for sure. That's the greatest help that we a country can donate to another country. Yeah. So thank you to you and wish all the best and uh, thanks for your time and your kindness. Thanks to you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.